So today, I would like to introduce two very special guests to Perpetual Traffic, AJ Yeager and Megan Connell. These two awesome humans, friends of mine, own a company called Praxis Metrics. And I will let them explain Praxis Metrics here in a minute because I'm not going to do it justice. But Praxis, in my eyes, is a company that helps solve data and tracking issues for their clients. And what I love about this company is that AJ and Megan, they've been in digital marketing for a long time. And they realized that data and tracking was a huge issue that they were having in their own businesses. So that's really what started and got them into Praxis Metrics, which is both of their main focuses now. So I love that your business was founded off of solving a problem. And I can't wait to demystify, you know, some of the issues that we all have around data and tracking as media buyers. How's it going, AJ and Megan? We are doing great. So good to be on with you guys. Awesome. Super excited. Yeah, I love the black box, the black box of data. (laughs) (laughs) We're opening it up. We're revealing Opening the black box of data. That's right. I figure like when you open it up, it's like this light shines, like, you know, Raiders of the Lost Ark. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. And I think that's a great place to start. I think that most media buyers, that's really who's listening right now, people that are buying paid traffic online, most media buyers, they know that they struggle with data because they're not sure if they're getting proper data inside of Facebook Ads Manager. They're not sure how that data actually attributes to purchases that they're seeing inside of their CRM. And some people out there might even think that they could buy like a cheap dashboard tool or or some sort of solution to this data and tracking issue. So in your all's mind, can you guys explain like why it is that we all have this problem that your company is solving? Yeah, that's a great question. Honestly, I think it's because we've never really had access to data the way that we do today, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, we think about the last 30 years in digital marketing, and you think about big data, and that's always been reserved for enterprise-level companies, right? These huge multi-million dollar initiatives of the Amazons and the Googles of the world to really get into data. And so what's happened is a lot of people have just completely said, well, well, big data is only for enterprise. And so they haven't really taken ownership ownership or taken the opportunity that exists right now in the market to gather their own data within their business, right? We have the beautiful ability right now to have data tracking in a lot of different tools. Now, some people are scared by that, but as marketers, (laughs) it's, it's one of the most valuable things that's happening right now. It's a shift in the marketplace. It's a shift in the entire world. And those that are capitalizing on that right now are putting themselves head and shoulders above their competition, right? It's like in the early 90s when the dot-com boom happened, people who got a website out shown their competitors and the competitors are no longer in business. It's the same thing with any online company right now. If you're not looking at your data, your direct competitor is, and then they're going to have insights and information that you don't have, and they're going to make different decisions based on that data and information that's going to help them scale faster than you can. Yep. And let's also be real. <clears throat> not all of us are data scientists. Not all of us <laughs> got an aim. I am not. <laughs> <laughs> Completely. And, and, and you can't be expected to. A lot of your listeners, like you may be running an agency, running a business, you know, no matter what, like, there's so much that's already on your mind to grow your company. You don't have time to be a data scientist. That's why we exist. That's why we started saying, hey, we want to help these people out. And it's about a mindset. And I love saying, like, you don't actually have to be a mathematician to be more data driven. There's yeah. a certain way to go about this in your business to ask the right questions and get those answers through data. Yeah. And I think humans are spending more time online than they ever have. And they're buying more stuff online than they ever have. And therefore, us as digital marketers, we're taking advantage of that, right? But with this sort of omni-channel approach where we might be running traffic on different traffic platforms, that really presents an issue. Because I think a lot of our listeners, the need for data comes when they are spending money and they 
want to see what their return is. And I know that that's something that you guys solve for people. So could you explain how it works? Like, what do you guys do? (laughs) And how could someone solve this problem that they have? What we want to do is we want to make it attainable for everybody, right? We work with huge, large corporations and companies, but we also work with the startups who have seen success and then they want to scale and they want to know what they should be doing and not just throwing ad revenue everywhere and seeing what sticks, right? They want to know what's working and not working. And so Mm -hmm. what we do is we're an outsourced data team, basically. Up to this point in our business, we've been what, five years? Oh, LinkedIn yeah. just told me it's my five year anniversary. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> we need a cake. <laughs> yeah, we basically, we've worked with a lot of large companies over the last five years, building out custom solutions, really helping them understand their data and take action from their data, right? And through all of those experiences, our team has really treated each individual dashboard or data project that we've worked on as research and development. There's only so many questions you can ask in marketing before you start coming up on the same ones again, right? And so what we found is these patterns and the correlations between what the big guys are asking and what the little guys are asking. And it's all the same thing. It's what's working, what's not working. Where should I spend more money? Where should I spend less money? What should I tweak here, right? And so what we did is we found, you know, there's also only so many platforms that you use within marketing. There's only so many ESPs, only so many, especially paid media. There's only so many platforms. And so we started coming up with a lot of the same reusable logic and coding that we were using on big companies. And we said, well, why not offer these to smaller companies too, because they're using the same tech stack. And so that's what we've really done is we do the custom implementations and solve these big, heavy, big problems like multi-channel attribution, you know, and all these (laughs) sexy different things. But then we also work with small companies with kind of some pre-built metrics and pre-built dashboards to help them have a starting point, you know, like things like lifetime value of their customers. Most clients, like we had a call the other day with a client and we're like, Hey, what's your lifetime value of your customers? And they're like, Oh yeah, we're really good. We know, we know our lifetime. We're like, great. What is it? And they're like, well, it's between 60 to $90. Oh, wow. <laughs> like, that's, that, that, that's, that's a shift. A, that, that's a big gap. And uh, was that $60 last month and $90 this month? Was yeah. that $60 in, you know, one day LTV and $90 in a six month LTV? Like, you know, and it just leads me to more questions. And so what we do is we basically answer those questions. We help people get more granular rather than just saying, oh, yeah, I know this one number. And then they're done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Averages. So. We don't really believe in averages, do we? No. no. Averages yeah. is dirty. <laughs> we, we, we became very specific because what's working on one traffic source isn't going to be working on the other. So we've taken all of this big data stuff, made it simpler because we really love the smaller and medium-sized businesses, and we can deliver that value to create hockey stick growth. Um, So basically, at the end of the day, we are here, the problem we solve is waste. We help you eliminate wasted time, energy, and money. Yep. That's the big thing we do. And if you can awesome. in, reduce the waste, then optimization gets that much easier. Mm-hmm. Instead of just focusing on optimizing only the things that are working, we're going to remove all that waste and then make your job a lot easier. So that's what we do. Love it. And by the way, guys, you can work with Praxis. Go to praxismetrics.com to check out more. That made me want to work with you guys again. <laughs> But awesome. Thanks for explaining that. So as a media buyer, right, I'm buying ads on multiple channels. What are the metrics that are most important to look at? I mean, I think Ralph and I have our opinion from the media buyer side, but I love what you guys said about you solve these really complicated problems for these big businesses and you found these certain patterns. So could you shed any light there so that our listeners know what they should be looking at? Yeah. And, you know, it does vary business to business. We say that, you know, everybody kind of suffers from terminal uniqueness where, Mm -hmm. you know, the differences and the nuances in your business might be totally different than another. And we have seen some really interesting industry-specific trends or, or differences. But overall, we all know there's there's a couple of key metrics that every single business needs to be tracking, right? Mm-hmm. You have to know your ad spend. You have to know your return on ad spend, right? But those are very, very basic. Then it's, okay, so how about cross-platform? Like, I want to know mm-hmm. my return on ad spend cross-platform. But then a lot of our clients are saying, well, ad spend is not my entire business. What about, can we take into account our cost of goods sold? 
I want to take into that into account or shipping expenses because that varies, right? <laughs> Depending on where people are and what, what we're selling and how we're selling it. And then I want to take into account maybe my marketing technology spend, right? So really going deeper into, hey, I want to know way more depth into actual profitability rather than just return on ad spend. That's something that we've seen a lot of people just kind of stop and only ask for ROAS and not ask those secondary tertiary, you know, questions that really get them more detailed. Ralph, I'm just curious from an agency standpoint, do you guys have to worry about this for customers? Like when you're calculating your return on ad spend, are you having to look at cost of goods sold? Because I've never really thought of that before. It's a metric that we start off with when we first introduce a customer into the agency is we find as much as we can about their business and then back out their metrics based upon what their projected profit margin is. So in most cases, we're shooting towards either a CPA goal or a ROAS goal. And a lot of that is sort of secondary to like, you need to know your numbers in your business. And we've actually had occasion where customers have said, all right, well, I need a 2X ROAS. And all of a sudden they're like, wait a second, I'm losing money on that. Now I need a 4X. Oh, no. and, you know, so the fact that you actually had somebody that said between, I think it was 30 and 60 or 30 and 90 is sometimes yeah. actually better than what we get sometimes because mm-hmm. we can't go into the numbers as deep as we probably want to. But Regardless, people need to really know, like, what is my cost of goods sold? How much can you pay for a customer? What is my long-term value of a customer over what time span? And I think that's a thorny issue that even really mature businesses, I'm still surprised by this, eight, nine-figure businesses struggle with on a daily basis. And then they look back to the platform that we talk about here the most, Facebook, and they oftentimes won't be able to really decipher how much is that channel paying Mm. everything that isn't attributed inside the ads manager, which Mm. might get us into this deep, dark place within the black box here about (laughs) multi-channel attribution, which is the thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about. But I mean, maybe at a base level, we can talk about like attribution itself. Like if we're talking about spending money on Facebook and Instagram, What are the metrics that you guys look at? What are customers looking at? And what are the problems that you find with those customers with just the platform unto itself? Because it's a great platform. We love people-based tracking. We don't really like pixel-based tracking quite as much or cookie-based tracking rather. The point is is that it's a good platform, but it has its limitations. So what challenges do you see with the businesses that you guys work with? Every single client, uh, we face over-attribution right? We've got all these different platforms that are claiming ownership for, hey, I brought you Mm. this customer. And yet Mm -hmm. the reality is that customer went through seven different touch points. Mm. They, you know, they first clicked on a Google ad and then they got retargeted by a Facebook and then they ended up on the autoresponder series. And then they followed you on Instagram and then they click on something and then they end up purchasing. And every single platform says that was 100% me. <laughs> of <And> course. So, <laughs> and in our case, it's Facebook and Instagram. We've got Facebook saying, hey, I gave you $100,000 worth of revenue this month. Yeah. And Google saying, I gave you 100000 <laughs> And then you look at your bank and you're like, I got 125000 <laughs> What is happening? Yes. Right. And this is the biggest question, right? Yep. I get, why is Facebook over-reporting? Why can't I trust? You know, And I think people lose trust in Facebook because of this. But I think a lot of it has to do with you know what we're discussing right right now. And duh, of course, Facebook is going to say that. Of course, Google yeah. is going to say that. This is how they make their money. This is how it's a free platform. And so people just don't think about all of the different aspects of it. And so that's what leads them to just be like, oh, all data is dirty. And they don't realize that there are opportunities for you to get closer to the real numbers, right? And the mm. problem is a lot of people look at this in such a siloed approach. They just look at Facebook and then right. they just look at Google. And then they just look at their bank account. (laughs) And that's not the client's experience, right? They're bouncing in between platforms and storing little metadata pieces of information across all of them. And so what we do is we work with the back end of the systems because, of course, your Facebook dashboard is only going to show you the ooh-la-la pretty highlights. Very high level. They're not going to get granular into timestamps. And they're not going to get granular into unique user IDs, right? Right. That lives in the back end. That lives in the API, 
right? And so what we do is we pull the raw data out from the back end of all of these systems. What that allows us to do is A, get more information, and B, it allows us to do something where we are able to cross-platform attribute different things to a unique identifier, right? So for example, if you have, you know, Google tracking turned on and you have a unique Google ID that's tracking all of their things there, and then they cross into Facebook, and you can see that that's the same person, we can then on the back end say, well, unique identifier GA1234 equals Facebook1234. And now all of a sudden you have cross-platform identification of the same user's behavior, right? And then that then can tie into your Shopify, your Amazon data, and then we get that full picture, right? And there's a lot of tools out there that are filling in pieces, but unfortunately in the market, especially just when you're looking at it from a marketing perspective, there's a lot of tools that are like, oh, well, we'll just show you this piece. Like, oh, we're just going to look at social or we're mm-hmm. just going to look at email metrics or we're just going to look at, you know, e-commerce metrics. And all of these companies that we work with are like, well, that's not my entire business. That is a very mm-hmm. fragmented view of the business. And then it's not connecting to everything else. And when you connect that on the back end through a true database and through ETL, which is extracting transforming and loading data into one centralized database. It allows you to get cross-platform information and to really link together that entire customer journey, right? And that's what everybody's looking for. The problem is most people think they read some sort of article and it's like, oh, you should be doing, you know, multi-channel attribution. (laughs) Last click is the worst and it doesn't give you this insight, right? And then they're like, okay, cool. How do I turn on multi-channel attribution? Right. Right. And it's not. It's not a button. <laughs> it's not yes. just a system. It's it a lot a of very, work. Yeah. yeah. There's no AI that just does this all for you. It's what we call handcrafted metrics. It takes real work inside of these tools to make it all work on the end. So, yeah. and, and this is, it all comes down to tracking. This yeah. is your output is only as good as your input. Mm. You can make your life a lot a lot easier and we could have an entire hour and a half or two hours just on tracking better, but it all really comes down to the beginning of this is tracking. Uh And that's the biggest reason I wanted to have you guys on. When I met you and I learned about what you did, I had no idea the amount of work that went into handcrafted data like you're talking about right now. And that to get almost perfect tracking still in 2019 is a lot of work, right? It's not something, you know, it's like I said earlier, you can't just buy a $15 little dashboard online that's going to fix the complexity that is is multi-channel attribution. And I think what you guys said earlier about this being a mindset, when you are looking at the results of your Facebook ads or Google ads or email, you have to think about this in a customer journey, just like you guys said. And I think a lot of issues that people have with data and tracking that are listening, yes, it's definitely the complexity of it and how do I do it, but it's also their mindset around it. And if you understand the big picture, it can make this a lot easier to digest, I think, even when the metrics might not be totally perfect. Yes, that is so well said. And going back to what Ralph does with your clients, Before we build any dashboards, before we go and execute anything, we have got to get clarity up front. And that means the mindset. That means identifying where all this data lies. If it's in some IT person's head, if it's in the owner's (laughs) head, if it's spread out in spreadsheets or Word documents or wherever the heck this stuff is, we've got to get clarity. And we use this process called metrics mapping. So we help build a roadmap to data success by asking the right questions. We have these seven steps that we've proprietarily built and walked companies through, large and small. And once we do that, it's amazing how everything gets clear for us and for our clients. We do this first. It's all about data education and that mindset. And then from there, With that roadmap, we can say, okay, let's take this in pieces. Let's not do all of the things. Let's do the things right now that are going to move the needle and create a return on investment. And then we can always add in the different elements of your business from sales and marketing to then inventory, then customer service and finance. It's a journey. This is not going to happen overnight. Yeah. Going back to what he said about, you know, kind of the metrics mapping is really extracting from people's heads 
the questions that they're asking about their business, the things that they're not getting answers to, or the things that it takes so much manual time to go and do it. Yes. You know, by the time you get it, it's either outdated or you've just spent, you know, one of your smartest team members, you know, <laughs> just spent three hours a day on it for a week. And then right. they've got another question and they have to go back to it because they didn't do it by month or whatever, you know? And so it's extracting from your head. It's the business questions. It's the business goals. It's how are you going to hit those goals and what would you need to know in order to make that happen? And then digging deeper and deeper and deeper. And so that's kind of that first piece of it. And then it's very, very simple. We just ask a question that's, okay, so if you were to look that up right now, where would it be? And it's so funny because we'll have business owners that are like, I just need to know this one thing, this one metric. And then we're like, great, where would it live? And then the team member's like, we're not tracking that. (laughs) (laughs) And it becomes this big gaping hole. And we're like, all we do is we uncover, hey, look, in order to have these awesome insights, you first have to have this in place to gather the information. Without that, it doesn't matter how beautiful the dashboard is. It's going to not be valuable, right? And so it's like AJ said, the output of these dashboards, the output of the answers that we're giving is only as good as the tracking that's in place, whether it be in the native systems, whether it be something complex that you've built out yourself, right? And so with clients that are just beginning, a lot of them do not have the opportunity to have you know, multi-channel or multi-touch attribution because they can't invest in all of those tracking initiatives right now. And that's okay. You can still make decisions with last click attribution. That will be okay. It's not going to be the end of the world. Plenty of other companies have done it and still gotten insights. Um, But then Ralph, going back to what you said, it's like, okay, so once people buy, now you've seen, here's where they came from. How much did they buy? And it wasn't just that first initial purchase, right? Which is what Facebook or Google usually tracks. It's okay. What did they buy from me 60 days later? What about Mm -hmm. six months later? Right. And then that allows you to see your allowable cost per customer. Like the acquisition cost is such a big thing that people aren't really diving into in a mathematically sound way. They're just looking at, oh, we had $20 worth of sales in day one. Our COGS are $5. The media costs X amount. And so that gives us $12 for us to spend. And we've had clients just by doing, you know, really granular lifetime value of their customers in one day, 30 day, 60 day, 90 day breakdowns and cohorts, they're able to scale by 3000% just by knowing that because they had no idea that their upsell flows and their autoresponder sequences were, or their affiliate deals were yielding so much on the back end, and they only had to acquire that customer once. And so with agencies, especially, you know, agencies are held accountable to, you know, the return on ad spend. But when, you know, if this customer is worth $2,000 in two years, I want to know that. (laughs) Yeah, it's a longer journey, I think, than most people really want to travel at times. They just want to know that one question. All right, if I spend a dollar more, you know, on Facebook or 100% more or $100,000 more for us on Facebook, will that mean my business will get to X amount? And Oftentimes, it's not quite that simple. I mean, you know, for a lot of agency customers at Tier 11, Facebook and Instagram is their primary, if not their only traffic source. So if sales go up, sales go down, we can kind of piece things together, you know, but there is the 28-day attribution window, you know, inside Facebook. There's now, you know, there's advanced measurement, which goes out to 90 days, you know, which is in a beta, soon to be rolled out. So there is data. But the point is, is that that's the central question. I think every customer, I mean, they probably need to go back to one of our earlier episodes on perpetual traffic, which we'll leave in the show notes on how much to actually pay for a customer using cost of goods sold, using, you know, what's my selling general and administrative? What is my projected profit margin? What's my return rate? All these sort of simple math things. And then backing that, like that's the first metric that you got to figure out oftentimes. Mm -hmm. It sounds like when somebody works with you guys, those are the things that you dive into first. And then you're like, all right, well, now we can work with each other. Yeah, that's exactly right. Every client that starts with us, we have a recommended roadmap because a lot of them are doing this stuff manually and they're not doing it as granularly as we do. And so even things like, you know, ROAS, we can provide a little bit more depth 
than they typically have because we're using true data scientists and actual, you know, data tools that instead of just a smart person with a spreadsheet. And so even just giving them those basics can help them scale drastically. And then what we do is we layer in the complexity. There's no, like, how do you eat an elephant? It's, you know, one bite at a time. Mm -hmm. Let's start you out with these metrics that are the key components, right? And then we layer it in. We layer in the different platform channels. We layer in, hey, are you using UTMs? No. You don't have a UTM hierarchy. Okay, if you were to do that, we would be able to show you all of these numbers based on the granularity of individual ads. Or you have three copywriters writing for you. If you group them all together and give us basically the hierarchy of who's doing what, we can show you that, you know, their conversion rates on these ads that they're doing. We can help you with all these variables. Like even we have a lot of clients that think that there's only a certain amount of things that can be tracked. <laughs> There's an infinite amount and people don't get creative and creativity is what is changing the industry. So mm -hmm. for example, somebody tracking manually, even manually going through every single ad and looking at the variables. What are the variables that you've done on each of these ads? Is the button on the left? Is the button on the right? Right. We do all these split tests. And then after a thousand clicks, we say, kill that one. Right. Right. Has anybody ever gone back to all of this aggregated data that we have on years and years and said, okay, let's actually look at some of the non-tracked data and let's go back to it. So saying, did we use an orange button? Did we use a green button? Did we have a picture on it? Did we just have, was it a meme? Was it this, right? And even just a simple spreadsheet that has yeses and nos, that is data, and those types of things can be overlaid with click through rates, with, you know, purchase rates, with all of these different things and, and at lifetime value. We can tie all of it together and then we start to quantify the non quantifiable. And that is what your competitor is doing that you're not. <laughs> Completely. And, you know, I think it solves the problem that a lot of listeners have. You know, it's not that they can't trust the Facebook data necessarily. It's that how does this data relate to all of, you know, my other marketing efforts on other channels? So I think you guys explained it great. From our, our listeners' perspective, I mean, at what point in their journey should they consider a third-party data tool outside of, let's say it's just a Facebook and Instagram advertiser? At what point do I say, hmm, Praxis Metrics, these guys sound like they're pretty smart. <laughs> Maybe I should go check them out. They're nice. But no, I mean, at what point I'm like, well, you know, 28 day, if I even know what the 28 day attribution window is for Facebook, maybe you guys can explain that just a little bit between view through and click through. But then at what point do you consider a third party tool in your opinion? Yeah. Great question. Honestly, it's whenever you start getting annoyed. <laughs> That's the <laughs> frustration. <laughs> That's a good answer. That's yeah. why we started this company is we were super freaking frustrated because AJ used to run a digital marketing agency and he had, you know, 30 clients at the same time. And his smartest <laughs> team member was reduced down to freaking report building and logging in and just manually putting all this stuff in a stupid spreadsheet and then sharing it with clients and they have another question and then you got to go back to the spreadsheet go block yes. into these 20 different systems you know just to get basic stuff and it's annoying yeah so uh, we understand the frustration we understand the pain and that's why we double down and said we want to be world class at helping companies with their data and so because we've gone all the way to the big companies we've swung back this way out of purpose and impact to help companies there's this piece of, you know, if you're under a million dollars in revenue, we're here to help educate you and teach you what to do. This metrics mapping is phenomenal. It's a great process. Everybody that comes out of it has clarity. So we have, instead of just pushing a, a platform or a, you know, a, a dashboard, that's not really what we're here to do. We're here to protect you, make sure you're making the right decisions along the way and escalate you up what we call the roadmap of data mastery. We want to help you grow and we want to grow with you. Yeah. So it really depends on where they are in this data maturity. So there's kind of four levels in our mind. You know, data infants are the newbies. They're the, you know, they're the influencers, they're the, they're the entrepreneurs who haven't really had a ton of traction, but they're committed, right? And so with those types of people, we can do consulting where we just coach them and we're like, hey, have you have you done this? Have you set up Google Analytics, right? Do you have event tracking? You know, do you, are you using UTMs, right? Basic 
foundational principles that allow them to co start collecting data right now so that you know in a year or two years when they're ready to do a BI implementation, they have mm -hmm. information rather than, oh, we're ready to go and do this. And we're like, great, you got jack nothing. You know, yeah. like we don't have anything to work with. So we start there. And then there's Google Analytics. Like it's a free, amazing tool. And if it's, most people say, hey, I've got a Google Analytics, I've got it set up. But they've, all they've done is all they've done is put the code on the page and kind of left it there and are so scared to log in like they don't even remember how to log in but there's if it's set up professionally set up with conversions if it's set up with the, the events the the goals and all that it's an invaluable tool to be used and you don't have to log in and see dashboards there we can pull that through and visualize it differently later so we have an analytics team that helps do google analytics audits to make sure hey, these things are working, these things aren't working, let's fix it and let's get this as a low-hanging fruit done for you. Then we can move into dashboards later on. Yeah, so that's kind of phase one. And then we get into kind of those people who already have all that stuff. They've already got all the tracking. Now these are the people that are already tracking ROAS, already tracking ROI, already tracking LTV, but they're doing it manually. Some smart person on their team or, God forbid, the business owner, mm -hmm. co-founder, or CMO is actually doing all of this manually. They're doing what we said ETL is extract, transform, and load. You can do that manually. You just go log into the system, pull out the number that you think that you want, and then put it into a spreadsheet, transform it into the business logic, and then load it into a, a visualization that makes sense to you, right? Mm. So usually when people are kind of at this phase two, they already have that foundation. They already have really good insights that have gotten them success it's gotten them to where they are. And now they're like, okay, we need to scale. And what we've done that's gotten us here today will not get us to that next level of 50 million in annual revenue, 150 in annual revenue, right? And those are the people where they're like, okay, I know that my LTV is between 60 to 90, but now I need to know 30, 60, 90 day. I need to know it by channel. I need to know it by source. I need to know it by ad, right? And then that's where we're like, okay, cool. Now we can help you guys with a lot of these pre-built dashboards that we've already done a million times cost effective. It's really fast time to value. Like we can get them things like that in two weeks rather than like a six month turnaround time. Right. And then once they have started using that, and like AJ said, it's an indoctrination and it is a retraining of their team to be actually data driven. A lot of people say, oh yeah, they're data driven marketers. And it's not true. They are looking at very, very basic numbers and they're not asking that secondary tertiary question, which is not what is happening in my business, but why? And why am I having these spikes? Why am I having these values? And how specifically should I remove the valleys and increase the spikes, right? Those, those are the questions that are yielding these clients to have exponential growth. And then those are the clients that we usually work with on the custom dashboards where they're like, okay, we now know all of what's happening now let's get into the fun stuff. Let's get into the multi-channel attribution. Let's get into the deep, deep, deep weeds. And that's where they're like, okay, this is a big data initiative now. Does that clear it up? Yeah, yeah, it does. And I think um, also expectations for the, the customer. I, I love the answer of, you know, when you start to get frustrated. Me too. That's when you have to yeah. do it. <laughs> that's usually the impetus for a lot of things in life, isn't it? But I mean, definitely with this sort of stuff, because there's so much data that's being thrown at you at any given point in time. Um, do you ever get it 100% right? Like you know where Ooh. exactly every penny is going Never. and where it's and coming out. Is that attainable at any level like in our In the in world human today history? even. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know why? It's because we are at the disposal of other companies hmm. and their data, yep. right? Facebook, Completely. one day, because of Cambridge Analytica, thanks for ruining it for the rest of us, cut off multiple columns and multiple reports from their API, where we used to be able to have much more granular and much more impactful and much more insightful data, it no longer is available to us. Amazon is a perfect example. The jerks, <laughs> they, don't, uh, they don't allow us to see the individual user email address, right? And so then what it does is it forces the business to have to get creative in tracking and in merging different data together, you know, like, hey, now we have to merge based on a physical shipping address, you know, if they have a Shopify store and an Amazon st store, but then what about 
apartment complexes, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like there's all of these things that you can never have 100% accuracy because you don't have 100% of the data. But anybody who can get more and more and more accurate by getting more and more data will have an advantage over anybody else. It's not that it's not all there. It's also that it's always changing, right? I mean, there's new technology coming into the mix. Facebook's changing. Amazon's changing. So, I mean, I don't know if it will ever be perfect, honestly, and we wouldn't be evolving, but it can be a lot better than it is right now for a lot of you guys. You can yeah. make really educated decisions on 80% of data. Yeah, seventy percent. You know, I mean, you're making a very informed decision, much better than you were, let's say, ten years ago. I mean, think about how far all this has come, too. Let's keep yes. this in perspective. Yeah, and also, you know, one of the biggest things I learned from AJ and Megan is not necessarily to obsess over the tracking side. Like in terms of, I mean, you definitely want to make sure it's you know as correct as possible, but it's also how are you thinking about data, right? Like, what questions do you need to solve in your business, and what number can you use to track that? So when I was at Digital Marketer, we hired Praxis Metrics to build dashboards. And I remember we said that we wanted to track churn. And you asked a few of us how we track churn because we were having an issue with that and we were all tracking it in a different way. Like we were using a different formula that didn't even come down to the quality of the data. It was just like, are we literally all on the same page, right? Like, are we even, you know, tracking in the same way? Are we using the same formulas? And what are the best metrics to use to help us achieve our goals? Right. So I think it's even so much more than just being able to track online. It's like, how do you actually think about data? How are you using it in your business? Yeah. And I'm glad you brought that up because we face that all the time. You have no idea. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I remember inner, you know, how hilarious that was. <laughs> <laughs> People don't yeah. communicate these things and they each have their own little spreadsheet that they're basing their decisions off of. And they missed a formula here or they did this calculation and they forgot to take this into account. And that happens all the time. And it's a very common thing. And just by having this conversation with your team, I mean, one of the biggest things that we preach is data democratization. We want every person in the company, I don't care if it's the executive assistant, every person has a unique perspective and view and vantage and history and background that they can bring to the table. And when you democratize this data amongst the team and share it, you'd be surprised at how many awesome ideas get sprung from somebody looking at a number and being like, wait a minute, does that take into account this? And then we're like, oh my gosh, no. And then, you know, and then we yeah. find this huge hole and this, or this huge opportunity. Right. And so just sharing it amongst the team, having open communication in team meetings, yep is so, so valuable. And opening up the hood and being like, what are we using? Especially as an agency, man, talking to your clients. And we've seen this because we've been on both sides. We work with agencies that, and we help them report their numbers to their clients. And then we work with clients who have four separate paid agencies, right? Oh, and gosh. what we've seen both sides. And the number one thing that we've seen is clients saying, oh yeah, but the numbers that they report on are just totally wrong. And we don't see them like that at all. And the agency is like, we are doing awesome. And the client is like, they're lying. <laughs> and we're like, all of this is a communication wow. issue. That's it. But we've seen a lot of agencies get fired too, because they had a different number than the client had. And those little variances in calculations make a big difference. It's about data. It's trusting your data. So if you don't right. trust your data and where it's coming from, how are you going to have faith in that agency or whoever's reporting that to you? Yeah, we had a client the other day. Like I asked for a testimonial and she's like, yeah, I love I love having these dashboards not from my marketing agency because everything that they report to me is with rose colored glasses. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, that's not what it should be at all. It should be right. transparency and it should be, hey, here's what we think success is. And every person totally. in a company should have a KPI that they're personally responsible for. Right. Yeah. That your job is measured based on your impact on yep. this number. Right. Whether mm -hmm. it's reducing churn, whether it's reducing the amount of, you know, expenses, whatever it is, having that data across the board is super, super helpful. And having everybody agree to the formulas. Oh, totally. Clutch. 
Yeah. Well, guys, this has been so awesome. Thank you for enlightening us <laughs> on data stuff. And you can find AJ and Megan at praxismetrics.com. If working with them sounds like uh, something you want to do with your business. Ralph, any last comments? No, no. I think it's just been great to have you guys on here. 